I'm in modern day Iraq, a place that has garnered a bad rap for modern day events. Roughly 5,000 years ago, or 3,000 BCE, is a completely different story. Iraq is the epicenter of the ancient region known as Mesopotamia, also known as the Florida Crescent, and most importantly, the Cradle of Civilization. This is That History Show, the series where I, Mado, portray history through the eyes of the people who actually lived it. Today, I will be living the life of an ancient Sumerian. Before we begin, what Sumerian innovation do you think was most crucial to the advancement of humanity? I would greatly appreciate it if you commented your answer down below. Oh, what do you look at that? It's the self promo train! If you end up enjoying this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing, with the bell of course, and it shows YouTube that people are engaging with my video, henceforth showing it to more people. I would greatly appreciate it, with that being said, let's do it. Mesopotamia is the combination of two Greek words, meso, meaning the middle of, and potamos, meaning river. The rivers being the Tigris and the Euphrates. These rivers were important because, fun fact, you need to eat to survive. As we saw last episode, ancient humans' natural response to this conundrum was to lead nomadic lifestyles. Kind of like when your uncle enters a midlife crisis, buys an RV, and next thing you know he sends you a postcard from Nepal. 12,000 years ago, that changed when our ancestors tried their hand at farming, as well as breeding animals. This is known as the Neolithic Revolution. However, it would take until roughly 7,000 years ago until agricultural humans would start to congregate, and another 5,000 years ago until civilizations formed. I normally don't like to disrupt the narrative, but I've got to point this out. Look at this timeline. This isn't even a two-scale timeline. A two-scale timeline of history looks more like this. Everything that you learn in school, all of written history, is confined to this little sliver of human history. For the majority of human history, we are the equivalent of slightly advanced monkeys. Now we're just slightly advanced monkeys with guns and nukes. The story of human history is really a story of problems and adapting to problems. Think revolutions like the American or the French, or when you 360 no scope TTV Get Wreck Kid 420 for the fifth time, so he DDoSes you. Although Mesopotamia was known as the Fertile Crescent, it was still a desert, with brutal wet seasons in which the rivers would flood, and dry seasons with little snow rainfall. This meant that it was a constant struggle to harvest food. To combat this, farmers constructed levees to stop flooding, which they would poke holes into during the dry season. They also constructed a complex irrigation system to control the flow of the Tigris and Euphrates. This would often require the cooperation of farmers throughout Sumer, as the canals would span entire cities. It's like a group project with worth 50% of your grade. Either everyone benefits or nobody does. The whole desert thing also meant that there were few materials to build shelter, clothing, and live, laugh, love signs. Some commonly grown crops included wheat, barley, peas, lentils, dates, apples, cucumbers, and onions. They also grew tulips and cotton, but those don't do very well on the way down. Trust me. I'll discuss more about Sumerian inventions later, but for right now, what you need to know is that they invented the plow and the wheel, which allowed for easier cultivation. The plow even came with an instruction manual. That's not a joke. It had an instruction manual. Alright vegans, plug your ears. Ancient Mesopotamians were the first to domesticate many animals that we consider farm animals now. These animals include mutton, shaban, donkey burgers, beef, and bacon. You can unplug your ears now. These animals weren't only used for food. For example, sheep and goats were used for clothing, donkeys and oxen were used for carrying heavy loads, and pigs, well, pigs were really only for bacon, and cows were used for sacrifices. Alright, this section is for all the architects and HGTV fanatics out there. Sumerian houses had three floors, the first being a courtyard, the second, and the roof, where they would cook and sleep, depending on the weather. Because of the lack of wood and stone, the houses were constructed from sun-dried brick. Houses often shared walls like modern townhouses, which can be good or bad. The houses were also surrounded by a ziggurat, which I'll discuss more later. Oh hey Bill, I see you crawling out of the Stone Age. What's up team? It's your boy Catalyst DIY here, back with another banger DIY video. Before we start, I just wanted to let you know that you should subscribe with notifications, like all of my videos, and leave a comment telling me how great I am. I would greatly appreciate it as it helps me make money! Today, we're gonna be making a traditional Sumerian clothing for my main man, Bill. So what you do is, you hand some wool to a woman. The woman spins the wool and weaves the cloth. Then she gives it to a man who dyes the cloth. Both men and women wore skirts which were then tied with a belt. And just like that, you've got your very own Sumerian skirt. Make sure to push through, persevere, and keep it 110. I've been Catalyst DIY, and i catch you next time. I love money. I love money. I love money. Money is so great. Money is so great. Give me money. How's that, Bill? Oh, he's dead. I forgot to mention that Mesopotamian city-states were at constant war with each other. 
In fact, the first war in written history was fought between Sumer and Elam, in which the Sumerians won. Sumerians believed that the gods lived in the sky, so naturally they built staircases with a top reserved for re religious ceremonies. These were called ziggurats. There, civilians would leave their offering to the god, which would be <clears throat> enjoyed by the priests. Some Sumerian gods include An, the sky god, Enki, the god of wisdom, Inanna, the god of sex and warfare, and Captain Price, the god of awesomeness. By the way, priests were powerful in Sumer. They were at the top of the four recognized social classes, above the upper class, lower class, and yes, slaves. Slavery was common in Sumerian society. It wasn't uncommon for the men from neighboring city-states to be captured and be given a job relating to their abilities. It's kind of like a sports draft, except, you know, with slavery. Sumerian city-states are generally recognized to be the first cities. Some of these include Ur, the capital city, and Uruk, the largest city. This was one of the many Sumerian innovations, the largest of which being the invention of writing. This was cuneiform, which was written on damp clay tablets using pointed writing utensils. Over the years, these symbols were developed so they could 1. be universally recognized, and 2. to represent sounds, so they could be used for language. These tablets were used to allocate rations, keep good of goods and livestock, to track trading, and to write laws. They were also used to write literature, the first ever piece of literature being the Epic of Gilgamesh. Speaking of literature, you can read my Fortnite Jonesy fan As mentioned earlier, writing wasn't the only Sumerian innovation. Other innovations include sailboats, chariots, schools, bricks, the wheel, the plow, metallurgy, IDs in modern time, maps, astronomy, astrology, and to the dismay of students everywhere, math. With that being said, I've got somebody to meet. Art has existed throughout history, but once humans could settle in one place, it moved past the suggested paintings and cave stage. In fact, many people made money out of their work and became merchants and artisans. See mom, I told you I could sell my Captain Price body pillows on Etsy. They would make jewelry, pottery, and helmets, amongst other things. They would throw these goods onto sailboats and trade at their neighbors across the Persian Gulf. Sumerians were also one of the first to make music. They would construct instruments out of wood and bones. I'm about to make all the history teachers out there happy because I'm going to talk about war. Sumerians were the inventors of siege warfare, which is the op opposition to the standard two armies charged at each other in the middle of a field of warfare. Rather, this is when the enemy takes defense within their usually heavily defended city. Do them berate them, nowadays with missiles, but back then it was crossbows. This type of warfare was heavily utilized by the Romans. Sumerians did have a form of conscription, and the fighting force consisted of chariots and infantry. Some Sumerian weaponry includes maces, daggers, spears, javelins, and throwing sticks. They would also use shields and helmets. I would say I'm done talking about warfare, but this is the part of the video where I grossly oversimplify a nation's history. The city of Eridu is founded, Cuneiform is invented, Ubayid period begins, Marians construct a ziggurat, Uruk is founded, Uruk period begins, earliest evidence of religion, early dynastic period begins, Sumerian renaissance, one of the earliest code of laws, the code of Hammurabi is written, invasions end the Sumerian civilization. The end. In conclusion, completely illustrating the importance of Sumer would be impossible in a roughly 10 minute video, but I hope I laid the groundwork. Also, bear with me as I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want this series to be. Don't get me wrong, I like how this episode turned out, but it's not quite my vision for that history show. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe with the bell, leave a like, and comment some feedback, or even fact check me. I've been Mado, and I'll catch you in Ancient Egypt.